So beginning to look at geometric sequences, um, these are ones where we're usually timesing, and sometimes you think of it as dividing as well, depending on how you're looking at these things, but timesing or dividing between each terms in a each number in a sequence. So for instance, if we look at the first example, if we have 2, 8, 32, 128, what's happening here is that to go from one term to the next, I'm timesing by 4 each time. So what we have here is our common ratio r is equal to 4, because we're timesing by 4 each time. And r, you always want to think about what you're timesing by. Um, so even if you're dividing, you're going to think about a fraction or a decimal that you'll be timesing by. And we'll see how that looks down below. A common way to figure it out if you're not sure um, is to think about doing some division, setting up a fraction. But like the other problems, once you know what r is, you can just times by 4, times by 4, and you'll get the next three terms in the sequence if you need to fill it in. So looking at the first examples here, um, going from 6 to 12, from 12 to 24, from 24 to 48, you might have no problem thinking that that's times by 2. And so you would have r is equal to 2. And with that, if we times by 2 from 48, we're going to get to 96. 96 times 2 is going to be 192. 192 times 2 would be 384, and away you could go. So with the arithmetic sequence, we had a d was positive if it was increasing, and d was negative if it was decreasing. With geometric sequences, we're either going to have an r that is bigger than 1, or r that's going to be less than 1. So here you're going to have increasing, and r less than 1 will be when it's decreasing. So our first example here, r was equal to 2, it's bigger than 1, and you can see the sequence is getting bigger each time. Here, going from 27 to, tw to 9 to 3 to 1, we can see that this is decreasing. And so we should expect to get an r that's a decimal value. So less than 1, it's going to be a decimal. Now, if you're not good with your times tables and recognizing here that you're dividing by 3 each time, and we don't really want to think necessarily about what we're dividing by, but what we're timesing by, you might want to use your calculator to help you figure it out. So what we do, like they've said here, is we take the second term and divide it by the first term. So for instance here, I'm going to take the 9 and put it on top of the 27. So you're going to work backwards, and maybe that's a good way to arrow it is on the top. We'll put 9 on top of 27. And we get 1 third. Put 3 on top of 9. You'll get 1 third. And if you want to think about r being a fraction, you can just call it 1 third. Or you could use 0 0.33 reoccurring. But I would try to use the one-third because it would be a more precise answer for you. So if we find the next terms, 1, basically what's happening here, is 27 times one-third. And get in your calculator if you're not sure why that's true, just 27 times one-third. It's going to get you 9. And again, times one Again, you can write one third as a des as a divide by instead of a fraction if you feel like it. And again, times by one third, and times by one third, you're going to start getting decimals here. So you can write the decimal, or you can use your F to D button and write your fraction. But what we get here is going to be one third, then one ninth, and then one twenty seventh, and then the sequence will keep going. So again, if you're not sure what your r is by looking at it, take the second term, put it on top of the first term. So 30 over 6 gets you 5. That will be equal to r. Here, if we're not sure again, take the 6, put it on top of the 5, and that will get you your r. 6 divided by 5 is going to be 1.2. So what we're hap what's happening here is that we're going times by 1.2 to get from one sequence, uh, from one part of the sequence to the next. 
So that's how you find R with your geometric sequences. And sometimes you've got to think about it in word problems as well. So read the questions carefully and look for things like doubling. Okay, well that's going to be timesing by 2. Here you might have to write out the first few terms in the sequence. So the first time it swings is 12. The second time it swings is 9.6. And then we can find R again by doing the first term, sorry, the second term on top of the first term. You'll be able to find your R. And keywords again like half, okay, well that's times in by 0 0.5 or times in by a half. And language like 1.1 times, that's your R value, that's how much it's increasing by each time. So you've got to problem solve your way through those a little bit and see how you go.